Hello and welcome. In my last video I briefly showed you a tool which I used to patch the BIOS of a slot 1 mainboard to add Intel Pentium 3 support. The name of that tool was BIOS Patcher and in this video I would like to talk about it. To be honest, I don't know who exactly developed this tool. There are probably a couple of people who were involved into it, but the origin of this tool is the site rom.by and I would like to say a big thank you to the people behind that resource. If you are good in Russian or in using translators, it is a great source of knowledge about BIOS, FE, ROMs, hacks, mods and tools you would need to do all of those cool things. Well, one of those tools is the named BIOS Patcher. First of all, what does this tool do? It scans the BIOS, searches for known errors and fixes them. Furthermore, it searches and turns on hidden options and adds various features. The BIOS Patcher works only for a Word BIOS 4.5 and 6 and supports mainboards from Intel Pentium 1 to Pentium 4 as well as K6 through Athlon XP. Which features can the tool enable for us? There is the extended CPU support by adding new CPU IDs, microcode and everything what is needed for the correct initialization of the CPUs which were officially not supported by the original BIOS. This was what I briefly showed in my last video, where I added Pentium 3 support to an originally Pentium 2 only mainboard. Furthermore, older BIOSes had an error which limited the maximal size of a hard drive to 8.4 GB. The BIOS patcher fixes that issue and allows the usage of up to 120 GB hard drives. It also fixes the issues on many Pentium 1 and early Pentium 2 mainboards where UltraDMA was not activated for the drives which actually support this feature. So using such drives on the affected boards should bring some reasonable performance increase. And speaking of performance, the BIOS patcher can also add various fixes related to the VIA chipsets, enabling support for asynchronous PCI, improving the timings for various subsystems and more. The BIOS patcher can also enable a lot of options in the BIOS setup utility, like jumperless frontside bus settings, multipliers, hyperthreading settings and so on, as well as improve overall usability. Now the complicated question, how does it work? The full answer would be too much for this video, but basically an award BIOS from that time contained multiple blocks of LHA compressed data. Those blocks can be extracted one by one from the BIOS and patched or replaced by another ones. The CPU microcode is a good example where the complete block can be replaced by a new one and we should have an updated set of supported CPUs. Well, almost. The BIOS patcher has to wire up some things, but how does that happen? This is an interesting question, because the BIOS patcher doesn't make any changes to the original BIOS parts. Instead, it adds two more blocks which work as kind of overlay over the original BIOS. All the fixes, hacks and other know-how was collected over the years and integrated into the BIOS patcher. And since all of the award BIOSes are very similar and have their roots going back into 1990, many discovered improvements are applicable onto many derivates as well. The authors of the BIOS patcher promise that the tool works as careful as possible and applies the patches only if it is absolutely certain about the location. But what happens if the tool makes something wrong? Well, since the BIOS patcher doesn't change the original parts of the BIOS, it has an integrated fallback feature. It observes the keyboard during the initialization and if the key minus is pressed on the keyboard or the keyboard is disconnected completely, the BIOS falls back into the original state. So you always should be able to boot your machine as before, even with the patched BIOS. So where can you obtain the BIOS patcher? As I said at the beginning, rom.by is the place where you can download the tool. I'm usually using the version 4.23 and you will need the tools LHA and CBROM, which are used by the BIOS patcher to pack and unpack the BIOS blocks. Furthermore, you will need the CPU microcodes. I usually use all real, since it contains only the real CPU IDs and doesn't include any engineering samples, which I don't have anyway. Now you extract everything into one directory and to patch the file, you run bp-4-23.exe bios.bin. 
The BIOS.bin in this case is the original BIOS, which you previously read from the EEPROM of your mainboard or downloaded from the internet resources like ultimateretro.net project. After you patch the BIOS, you can simply write it back to an EEPROM and put it into your mainboard. If everything's fine, you should see the ROM.by message and the properly detected CPU, hard drive, whatsoever. Fine. Now, what if you want to use the system headless? I mean, without a monitor or connected keyboard, for example, as a retro server. As I said, the BIOS patcher integrates a fallback option, which is either activated by pressing the minus key on the keyboard or disconnecting the keyboard completely. In this case, the BIOS would think that it should fall back to the original state and will not boot again. Well, there is an option in the BIOS patcher to deactivate the fallback option. If you patch uh, the BIOS using the slash s argument, the fallback option will be deactivated. After that, the mainboard should always boot into the patched mode and will not check anymore if the keyboard has been connected or not. I usually use another tool named modbin, which I introduced already on my channel some time ago, to change the greetings message of the board, just to see that this BIOS was modified by myself, just in case I can't remember it after a while. But this is just my habit, and it's totally optional. So, I hope you enjoyed this small overview of the BIOS patcher, and would be glad to know if this tool helped to improve the one or another of your retro treasures. Once again, a big thank you to the developers of this BIOS patcher. It is a great tool, which makes the patching of a BIOS a child's play without the need to mess around with BIOS parts manually. Really great tool. And this is it for today. Please don't forget to do all the thumbs stuff, and I say thank you and goodbye.